Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. How you doing? This video popped up. A little bit provocative. I like it. Why I'll never move back to America. Damn. And I did see that, you know, the likes and dislikes. There's a few people that disagreed. I'm curious about that. Anytime I see that, I'm like, I wonder what, you know, that makes me even more curious. What did he say? The savvy expat. Check him out. Link down below. Let's see what we have to think. Let's see what his thoughts are. Why? He, apparently, he used to live here, and he ain't ever coming back. All right, let's see. What's up, savvy expats? From generation to generation, my life, my parents' life, and even my grandparents' life was completely and utterly curated by one simple concept. What the American dream. Is that you may ask? Well, that is the American dream. Call me delusional, but I believe at one point, America was the best country in the entire world. Okay. If that weren't the case, then there wouldn't be countless of foreign families immigrating, leaving their country for the land of the free, home of the brave to seek. There's a lot of different ways that, you know, like metrics by which you could gauge the best country in the world. So it's kind of hard to say, but as far as the most opportunities, it, Seems certainly like that's true. New opportunities. But just like many other Americans who decided to- Or used to be true, I mean. There's still plenty of opportunities here in America, though. Of course. There are still people moving here. Leave the country. I'll be speaking on why I don't- But it definitely doesn't feel nearly as- Nearly the same as what it once was. That might just be kind of like inherent to, you know, a new country. A new country that's relatively free, has a big free market, and gold. <laughs> um, you know, when it's first being established, a lot of opportunities. I see myself ever moving back to the U.S. anytime soon, as well as why leaving America was probably the best decision my family wow. has ever made. I wonder but where he went. Before we hop into that, allow me to disclose. I by no means intend to insult, slander, or speak bad about the U.S. I, hey, I wouldn't care if you did. I really <laughs> want to make that clear. This country holds a close place to my heart because that's where I was born and raised, and not to okay. mention, that was where I spent my entire upbringing. But I respect that, though. Now, after having moved to the Philippines, my views have drastically the Philippines. Sh shifted, and I'd love to share my experiences on why. So, without wasting time, let's get into it. Being from the windy city of Chicago, the first reason we saw it fit to leave the U.S. for the Philippines is, of course, because... It's gotta be... Oh, wow, safety. I was gonna say cost of living, but okay. All right, safety. Because of the safety. Hands down, without a shadow of a doubt, I feel much safer in the Philippines oh, than I did in Chicago. That, I... Not surprising whatsoever to me. I mean, I, then again, I don't really know the safety of the Philippines, I just don't know. But Chicago, infamous for being relatively unsafe. Now, bear in mind, it's not like my- Even like by American standards, quite, it's, it's one of the most unsafe cities. Family resided in the rough and tumbled streets of the South Side. No, that's not the case at all. We lived only 15 to 20 minutes just outside of downtown Chicago okay. in the relatively peaceful suburbs. Gotcha, now, gotcha, that may gotcha. bring you- So that's, I, that's, that's pretty safe. The question, why was safety such a big concern then? Well, mm. growing up in Illinois, I always felt like it was pretty safe. But let's not deny it, guys. It was only in the past couple of years that we saw crime rates massively jump. Let me see when this video was. Okay, 2023. Definitely after the pandemic. During the pandemic, crime went crazy. Man, all over. The U.S. With the political distress in the U.S. Luckily, it's coming back down now. Some of it, at least. West, much less in a controversial city like Chicago, we saw a crime occur that we never used to. Murder rates, kidnapping rates, theft rates, and sad to even say, school shootings became more common. And from what I see, these things were honestly expected in certain dangerous and lower income neighborhoods around the city. But little by little, what once was only prevalent in the South Side, for example, we saw these crimes begin to creep into what we thought were safe suburban towns just near us. Wow. And so safety became increasingly concerning. And I'm sure many of you from Cali can possibly relate. 
I've talked to a lot of you guys. And I believe that that is a big part of the reason why I feel perfectly content over here in my tiny town in Indiana. Relatively on the safety spectrum, I feel quite safe. That's because I it, pretty low population. There's just not that much going on uh, for there to be too much, you know, crazy crime. That's what I like about a small town or one of the things I like. Guys who've come on vacation here in the Philippines from California, and it's honestly sad to hear how what once used to be safe neighborhoods back in your town is becoming increasingly more dangerous to live in. We've all seen on the news the unfortunate crimes that occur with the shootings, the riots, and the lootings. These crimes not only just occur in these sketchy areas, but now even in these suburban towns that we wouldn't even expect. One example I have, and I don't know how many of you guys are actually familiar with the towns in and around Chicago, but we used to live near an upper class area called Oak Brook. And to paint okay. the picture, when you drive through these subdivisions in Oak Brook, it's apparent that it would be akin for you Californians like Bel Air and for the Floridians like Boca Raton. Big houses, They're safe rich. gated communities, Damn. wealthy retirees, you get the idea. So needless to say, when we saw on our usual news channel, ABC7, that there was a family robbed at gunpoint outside of Oak Brook Mall, a place that we used to go often, we were appalled. Or even a year before that. You know, that's, that is sad to see, but I always thought it was a little bit surprising that that type of thing, you know, I'm surprised the criminals don't go to the rich areas. I mean, I, you know, I don't want anybody committing crimes and stuff. It's all horrible. But wouldn't you think if you're going to rob someone, you want them to have something to, to take? <laughs> 14 thieves robbed over $140,000 worth of merchandise. This is just ridiculous. You see this type of, type of thing online now. It is crazy what's happening with the shoplifting and these gangs of shoplifters. And nobody in the store does anything. They can't do anything by company policy. They don't touch them. It's wild. From the same Oak Brook Mall. And this doesn't even just occur in the wealthy parts of Chicago, even in places like California too. You also may have seen robberies on the news in prestigious places like Beverly Hills. And it just makes you wonder if these places aren't even safe, then where can you go? I have a lot more stories from expats that I've personally met here in the Philippines, but I'll stop here because I don't really want to come off as if I'm fear-mongering. I just want to share our personal experiences because this is, after all, very prevalent in where we used to live back in Chicago, even though it was in a suburban area. But I also know that there are still very safe places to live in the U.S. My yeah, it is kind of a difficult thing. I feel like it's difficult, especially for me. I've never lived anywhere outside the U.S., so I can't really speak to how safe somewhere is or feels. I guess I can say I've never been assaulted. I've never been robbed here in the U.S., so that's good. <laughs> but with that said, you do know that there's a lot of firearms. You know when you're in the city that you know, you can be a target if you if it's late at night and and you're walking around alone, especially, you know, which just because I don't live in the city, I go to the city, you know, m many different cities quite often. So I do know what that is like. And um, yeah, whereas it's kind of hard to even imagine somewhere like, a, you know, like a European country or something where there's no firearms just walking around at night in a city and feeling safe. That is kind of a foreign concept. But on the flip side, the US is pretty safe. Like it's not like, you know, it's kind of hard to hard to exactly articulate it, I guess. It's not like this is some um, run down, overthrown with crime. It's all the mafia has taken over and you're just in danger if you step outside. No, <laughs> somewhere in between. My point being, however, crime rates have jumped quite a bit in the US, which is just one piece of the puzzle on why we decided to move to the Philippines. Now, on a more positive note, let's move on to the second reason on why I'll never move okay. back to the US, and that is 
plain and simple, we just have a better life in the Philippines. Mm. In almost all areas and aspects, whether it be financially, socially, or in experiences, wow. our quality of life is better in the Philippines. For me, there's only one area of life that's that amazing. Chicago far surpasses and trumps the Philippines in, and that is food. But mm. then again, in my opinion, there's no place in the world that can beat Chicago in the food department. I really miss mm. the Italian beefs and deep dish pizzas there. But back to my point, our quality of life in the Philippines. Okay, interesting. I think this is the most interesting point because, you know, even myself, I just, I have maybe like a misconception that the quality of life here in America is just really good. You know, that's kind of what you're brought up to, to think is that we're so lucky to live in this country and our quality of life is just really high, which is probably true for the top, you know, 1% of people in the country. Uh, for the middle class, I feel like that used to be true for the middle class to an extent, but the middle class is like shrinking now. And as time goes on, the middle class secretly becomes the lower middle class. And uh, yeah, now it just feels like most people are just struggling to kind of get by to have like a decent standard of living. <laughs> so I guess, I mean, that is so cool that to think that there's other places like the Philippines, apparently, where you just can have a better standard of living. Far surpasses our quality of life back in Chicago. I distinctly remember wow. when I told one of my classmates that we'll be moving to the Philippines, his response was, why would you do that? It's a third world country. And I get it, the Philippines does get a bad rep as its entirety being either just concrete jungle or impoverished makeshift houses. But mm. what most don't actually see is a place that we chose to live in, Bonifacio Global City. This city, just like a wow. select few other cities in the Philippines, would be considered Look in how clean. Oh my God. the upper echelons of zip codes within the country. The crime rates are low. It's a central business district of Manila with a diversity of shops and establishments to is gorgeous. choose from. And there's glamorous high rises throughout the city to dwell in. But what most foreigners don't know is that despite this city being considered one of, or if not the most expensive city in all of the Philippines for the same cost of living that you'd spend in a place like Chicago or California, you can live like a king here in BBC. So needless to say, I wonder how much it does cost. That's kind of amazing, man. That is amazing. I wonder what the, you know, I don't know anything about the Philippines to be honest. I'm thinking like, what's the Philippines GDP per capita? Just something basic like that. Oh, wow. It is low. It is low guys. 3000 man. So there's probably a huge wealth disparity in the Philippines, you know, But I can imagine if you've got some money saved up and then you move to the Philippines, I bet the cost of living is so much cheaper. Or if you can find yourself a good job, man. The reason we live better in even the most expensive city in the Philippines, BGC, than back in Chicago is of course because of the affordable cost of living here. By the way, I also do a full breakdown on moving to BGC as well as everything you need to know about this city before you come here. So if you want to check that out, mm. the link is in the description. That's interesting. Go check that out, guys. Now, the second reason is, of course, of what we spoke of earlier, the crime rates. The way that this I is interesting to me. OK, I want to know the numbers. I can go for a walk at midnight in BGC with complete peace of mind wow. knowing that I'll be safe would not by any means be applicable back in Chicago. Crime <laughs> rates not only in BGC, but the majority of retiree dense destinations in the Philippines are relatively low. But more than just the low crime rates, our life in the Philippines is better is because we're also rich in experiences here. Traveling in the Philippines. I wonder why crime is so low. Like, what is the, uh, obviously there's probably way tighter restrictions on firearms. But beyond that, is the law enforcement just much more strict? 
rent is unbelievably affordable. As I mentioned in an earlier video, one of our recent trips was taking a trip down south to Shergao to go surfing for a week. And guess how much our flight costs to go from concrete jungle to crystal clear tropical waters? I'll tell you right now, any flight here in America would cost you like, well, and that's, they do have some weird flights that you can get for like a hundred bucks, but that's like weird and unreliable. Any normal flight, at least 500 bucks. Only $50 per person. And bear in mind, I didn't even know they could fly a plane like economically profitably for that. 50 bucks a person. In the Philippines, even that can be considered pricey. So to travel what? from <laughs> province to province. He said he took a plane, right? Province and go island hopping here is not only affordable, but also wow. offers adventurous experiences. Now, moving on to the third reason why I don't see myself moving back to the US. That is because the American dream is fading. Please take note, I did not by any means say that the American dream is dead. There is still plenty of opportunity to live a better life in the US than many other countries. But the reason why I say the American dream is fading is because I feel like it's like the American dream. If you have the exact right skill sets, then you can live the American dream as it is right now. Or if you start a successful business, which I do think as being, you know, kind of like that's the real American dream is to come start a business and, and be your own boss and be successful that way. If you're looking for a job though, Basically, you got to be either a doctor, a lawyer, or a computer programmer, or an engineer. I'm sure there's some other things, but that's about it. Because we can't deny the fact to be like actually like living a lavish lifestyle. That the American dream is not the same as it used to be 30 to 40 years ago. The reality is most immigrants moving to the US today will not have as much success as immigrants like my grandparents who moved to the US back yeah. in the 50s and 60s. Why? Well first, what exactly is the American dream? It's an ideal by which equality of opportunity is available to any citizen allowing their highest aspirations and goals to be reached. And from that comes the fruits of what everyone sees the American dream as. Home ownership, a college degree, a well-paying job, so on and so forth. But the reason I think the American dream isn't... I He's right. There's definitely that aspect to it where the idea is like, if you're willing to work hard, you can accomplish whatever you set your mind to. Man, there is a lot of not truthfulness to that. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing myself say that, it's like, wow, that is so not true. You have to be so much more savvy about it than that. You can't just work hard and be <laughs> and be rich here in America. You have to work hard and um, do the right thing. You, you have to like kind of pick it apart and strategize about what you're doing a lot more than just working hard. I know so many people that will work hard, 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 and they're struggling ideal as it used to be back then is because number one the rising prices in the u.s although owning a home is an essential part of the american dream we've seen housing and rental prices dramatically increase in december of 2022 yeah. we saw housing prices increase by a staggering 8.8 percent following 12 percent increase from the previous in one month quarter and in this oh in one quarter Oh my God, in a quarter, that's insane. House prices went freaking insane. December of 2020. In the last three, four years. One, housing prices increased an all time high of 18.5%. And it's not just housing prices, but inflation rates in general. In 2022, the annual- in Yeah, it's not your house that's more valuable, it's your dollars that are less valuable. Inflation rate hit 6.5% in the previous year before that, in 2021, inflation rates hit 7%. So with rising inflation rates, even the prices for your basic necessities like eggs are becoming increasingly more expensive. To be exact, yeah. in 2022, a box of eggs rose in price by 60%. And so, considering the rising inflation and the rising cost of basic necessities, we would also expect a rise in wages, right? However, there's little evidence that points to any meaningful increase in wage growth. Not to mention the American... 
Whoa, that was kind of a broad statement there. I don't know. He kind of glossed over that. There, there's definitely was wage growth alongside the inflation. Um, but it was mostly like it really only affected people who were job hopping. Job hopping was very effective during that period of time. Uh, you could get a 10% salary increase like that every every six months getting a new job. Um, there was a huge demand for labor, so um, people getting new jobs were, were getting good salaries. American Dream Now is also built on plastic. What do I mean by this? Well, just to make ends meet, Americans now are more than ever shifting their expenses to credit cards and other lines of credit. As a matter of fact, statistically speaking, American households carry an average of $100,000 in debt. This is between auto loans, credit Jesus, is that including the mortgage? Credit card payments and other types of loans. And so, it's safe to say that Sounds like that's including the mortgage. The financial health of the But Credit card debt is going up and um, personal savings is plummeted, man. Average American citizen is not in good shape. This is especially the case with the younger generations, millennials in particular, who still struggle to buy homes. Yeah, good luck buying a home now. Despite carrying on this debt. In fact, the median age for home buyers in the US is 47 years old. Oh That's gosh. eight years older than the median age prior to the financial crisis. Wow. Now that is an interesting stat. That is pathetic. To add salt to this wound, the average American citizen only has $5,300 in their savings account, which only makes things look worse for the future of America. And we won't even get started on the retirement crisis in the US where the average American citizen cannot see themselves retiring by the age of 60 and if they are already 60 are still not in a place to retire. And so when it comes to the American dream, now nobody even thinks about retiring by 60 unless you are rich. Nobody's even that's not the standard even <laughs> man. Most people aren't even thinking about it until they're like 65 and even then a lot don't until they're like 70 now days with today's technology over here in america and also the cheaper cost of living in countries from abroad we can still accomplish that without having to live in the u.s now so that's just a small look of why i don't ever see myself moving back to the u.s anytime soon i have plenty of other reasons such as the philippine hospitality the tropical weather here being better than the snow in chicago and my overall happiness but we can cover that in part two feel free to comment down below if you'd be interested in seeing a part two so that i know i definitely would be that was really fascinating i don't know why this i wonder why this got some dislikes I'm getting 100%. I'm getting my 100% VA pension this year. Your videos solidify my decision to move back home and never look back. USA is getting crazy, too crazy. <laughs> uh, it certainly was the best country, but those times are long gone. Man, it's crazy how consensus that that um that viewpoint is. You know, it's sad. That's how you know it's true. <laughs> like, oh man everybody knows the u.s is not what it once was darn very interesting video thank you very much for watching go check out the savvy expat link down below i will see you guys on the flip side that's tomorrow yeah bye